<coughs> Hello everybody. Forgot I was running there for a moment, so you might have been able to enjoy that stay tuned picture. Lovely picture of mine. For a bit longer than you had hoped for. And I could have used this time more wisely to work on my hair day. What is this? It looks like Tintin. Do you call him Tintin in English? This dude with the dog and Captain Haddock? We call them Tim and Struppi. But I believe Tintin is his English name. Anyway, this is a new edition of the ever exciting, never growing stale because I have so much wisdom to share. Banter Blitz number 53, where you can challenge me to a game of three minute or five minute chess. And then if you're a Chess24 Premium member, we shall play such a game of chess and I shall hopefully win or I will be very upset and between the lines probably accuse you of many bad things. Um, yeah, that's the format. I thought I had a shirt lying around in the office, but I didn't. So I went for an even better thing, the Chess24 t-shirt, because it is well known that one can never have enough logos on the screen. Logo, logo. Let's get this started. Oh no, this is a humble brag about the bullet game I just played. To Not really humble, just a brag. Um, the bullet game I just played. I need to choose one of you fine challengers. And what about... You know what? Let's play Schachmachte? Checkmate? Schachmati? I don't know how to pronounce the name. And you are the United Kingdom. That does not help me in my pronouncing task either. Another thing I'm mildly confused about, why am I black? Shouldn't I be white? Did I have like reverse the board? This is extremely confusing, but I kind of like it. Mm, let me play with a flip board. I guess I could fix this. But this, I've never ever looked at the board like this, because I always have diagrams even when I'm analyzing from the white side. So this is extremely confusing and might lead to lasting brain damage. Anyway, if my brain is still functioning, um, we are playing a weird line of the French. This three knight e4 is one of these moves that are typically recommended in books like weird chess openings or surprise your opponent by playing a random opening and maybe he doesn't know it and then he'll be very surprised. The price you have to pay is normally not having a good position, but here with the cut, the Colors reversed. I do not like my chances at all because I really can't. I can't process what's happening on the board. It's extremely confusing. However, this pawn, which is not my pawn, it's his pawn, is probably technically a weakness, which I should try to somehow pick up. Like bishop c2, knight g3, and take it. Something along those lines. Pretty much exactly those lines. We shall see how that goes. And I think. This is getting too confusing already. Can I keep this up for a whole game? I don't know, man. Knight c6, that uh, if I go here, he could take cd knight b4. Eh, too complicated. I'll start with this. When probably you should take and go knight a5, bishop c2, knight c4, horse around a little bit. But even there, even if I have to go bishop c1 back, I still have faith that this is the weakest pawn on the board. Queen b6, whoa. This cannot go unpunished. Probably still this, because I want that pawn. Oh boy, this is confusing. I do think I know the setting to change it back. But I kind of, yeah, flip board. I kind of mentioned I would stick with this. So now I'm stuck here. I'm threatening to advance this pawn. Good thing we have coordinates. <laughs> d5. And my position is probably pretty good, which is something that I like to brag about playing Banter Blitz, that I have a good position against somebody I outrate by 1200 points. But those are the joys that my life has, my life, my life are also a big problem, my life has to offer. Let's try this attack. The first lady, oh, the second lady, that makes some sense. 
see where she goes. Bishop c5 is the most logical move, but I was hoping that in these complications that aren't that complicated, I would keep the upper hand. And if the board was not all the way messed up, I would probably have spotted that I can go knight takes e4 and knight d6 and win on the spot. Still, d6 is not exactly a blunder because my position remains winning-ish. Hmm. Okay, we have a situation here. Amphi Co Elias audio is not working. I believe normally the policy is if it's only one dude's audio, then I'm gonna assume. And you know what happens when we assume that it's your problem. If many people are complaining, then I'm gonna assume that it's my problem. So I'm gonna need more information than that to see if I should go into full blown punishment. Punish and panic mode. But let's not punish anybody yet. Panic mode about it. Queen e5 is trying to not allow me to queen my little pawns, which is a pity. I want to queen my pawns. Can I go here? And try to queen them? Maybe? So confusing. Trying to calculate knight b3, a b, bishop c8. But I can't. Not able to do it. Hmm. There must be some force win. Focus. If you mispronounce focus, it can lead you to some weird places. I don't know what to do. I'll just lose on time. It still does sound like it's a computer issue for Amphico Elias. And since it's been going on lately for a while, maybe you could have assumed that. I should stop using assumed. This was my the fruit of my deep calculation earlier on that I can pin him here with rook c5, bishop b3, rook e5, when I maintain my pawns, or at least it would cost black a piece to get rid of them. Rook d8. I probably have some tactical win like e7 or rook takes d5 followed by e7. Hence, I was very happy with this very deep trick. I'm studying the chat as I oftentimes do because I'm assuming it's not my move. No. Um, Petr Carlsen says, play with me, please. There's two problems with that statement. Number one, I only play with premium members. Number two, I prefer premium members that don't ask me to play them in the chat because I operate under the assumption that every premium member that challenged me wants to play me. Um, so I'm afraid it's not gonna happen, Petr Carlsen. Sorry about that. This is too confusing, but I promise to finish the game like this. I'm sorry for all this weirdness. I don't like it either. Hmm. Look at me. Lighting up a fire with my witty banter. That is a criticism that I often face, though sometimes it's justified, sometimes I feel it's not. That I'm trying to be funny all the time, trying too hard. So take this, haters. Not trying at all. Not even to say anything. Nah, not working either. Don't ever try this, seriously, to flip the board and play with the wrong color. It's just insanely confusing. My position is completely winning because of my extra piece. And these additional 
Thorn in the Flesh on F7. But it's not recommended to ever do this. Hmm. <laughs> it's also not recommended to ever blunder your rook with check. Oh boy, we're off to a great start. I'm gonna blame the reverse port, but the truth, uh, truth is has nothing to do with that. It's just my usual arrogance that I stopped caring about a completely winning position. And you should never do that. Because as Lenny Kravitz used to say, it ain't over till it's over. Now I'm very sad already. I won on time. But this is a bad start to the show. Sometimes you can feel it. Like number 51 was a bad show. Number 52 was a good show. Maybe I only have it in me every second show these days. Anyway, let's flip the board because this is, yeah. This has been causing massive problems. And play another game. Hmm. Who shall I play? A lot of regulars here. Another thing I tend to slightly prefer is newcomers, but I'm not trying to be too biased about it because I also value the guys that have been with us here on Chess24 for a long time. Do I have the right size of the board this time? Yeah, I'm black and I'm behind the black pieces. That is good news against Quantum Blaze. What is a Quantum Blaze? Is that some physics thing? I don't understand either part of the word. Blaze sounds like an American gladiator. Look at my references. Mm -hmm. Quantum I've heard of quantum physics, but I don't really know what it is. We, in the meantime, are playing a line that's very similar to quantum physics. The Berlin defense, and to be more specific, a sideline with 5d3. I'm not sure what the most exact move here is. You could make a case for queen e7, bishop d6, or knight d7, as I played. All of those look legal, even bishop g4. Some people don't mind giving that bishop on f3. But I'll go with knight d7 because this setup always made a lot of sense to me. I'm trying to castle, go rook e8, probably put this bishop on f8, and then either go c5 and maneuver this bishop around to c6 if I get the chance, or go sometimes knight c5 and knight to e6, depending on circumstances. But for starters, I gotta cover this pawn. Bishop d2. Does look like he wants to go bishop c3. Continue to put pressure on my e5 pawn, maybe make me go f6. But it doesn't seem like a major concern here. Mm. So yeah, since the pawn is not yet hanging, I do not feel the urge to play f6 yet. But now, since I want to complete my little knight maneuver, knight b8, knight c6, it's probably a good time to play it anyway. Queen b3 is legal, but I don't think it unduly bothers me. I have a feeling unduly is the one word I'm gonna overuse in this show. Hmm, knight e3, fair enough. I'll also conclude my journey. Of course, this doesn't always work, but it is a pretty typical regrouping for these lines. The knight in general wants to be on c6 or on e6. In this structure and c6 you could make a case for it being even better because it leaves the e6 square to the bishop but also doesn't have a better square than this one so now that my regrouping is finished i'm in pretty good shape long term with the two bishops controlling d4 and d5 if he fights for d5 with let's say c4 i can always use the d4 square i have my c7 pawn to later regain control of the d5 square by playing c6 so I do have a pretty good position here.
big discussion if Radio Jan or this guy is funnier. I kind of agree, Radio Jan is funnier. He's less bound by the laws of polite society. Hmm, but he's more hit and miss. Well, I'm consistently miserable. So you know what you get with Frankenstein. But not always what you get with this monster. As for the game, we've exchanged a bunch of pieces. It was a logical plan for white. I don't think it was probably the best decision. I still like my position because I am a friend of the two bishops. And I do hope that long term or mid term, short term, whatever term, actually I only hope for one term, but different story. These bishops will have their say. I'd also accept a blunder like knight d5, bishop d5, rook d5, queen d5, ed, and rook e1, checkmate, but that's probably too much to hope for. Anyway, let's move around a little bit, try to put some pressure on the e4 pawn. Bishop was doing quite okay on e6, I'm not sure if this is really the best, but sometimes you gotta look for greener pressures. B7 or A6. Oh, rook C3. Go here. And no, I have never played quantum chess. I have no idea what that is, but yeah, I believe Anna Rudel had a video. I don't have a clue. It sounded complicated. And I'm an old man. I find it very hard to learn new new tricks. Um, even old tricks. Oof, what am I doing? I was hoping for rook c7, rook e3, even though I didn't think that through either. But just rook d3 looks like a better move, frankly. Still, bishops having their say eventually. This bishop on d4 is strong. No bishop a6 is. Mm. A looming possibility, and after king h1, can I take here? Mm -hmm. Let's think this through together. Queen takes f5, knight takes f5, rook e1, checkmate. Rook takes d4, queen takes c2, I take c2, c takes d4. Queen c4, check, queen f7 back. Or maybe some fancier move like bishop d5. So, long story, slightly shorter, I can take on f5. And yeah, I should stop complaining about my age. I've started whining about my age in the last couple of shows. No idea why. It's not like it changed <laughs> a lot recently. So no, I'm aware. It's not old compared to older ages. Bishop d2. Why is quantum blaze still hanging in there? I would have liked for my rating advantage to have told by now. But he's playing well. And that's the thing. Rating doesn't win games. You still have to make the moves. And sometimes I fall for that misconception that all I have to do is show up and use my ginormous Grandmaster rating. The game will play itself. Never happens. This is one of these cases. Hmm. B5 looks like, at the very least, in strong time trouble, like an unpleasant move, because bishop d4, I had bc4, Zwischenzug, after knight d2, I have b4, winning an exchange, even though, even this is not 100% clear yet, because bishop takes b4, covers everything. Hmm. But I did win on time. Didn't learn what quantum place is. <clears throat> Thank you for the game, Mr. Quantum Blaze. I'll play somebody else. A lot of challengers. I appreciate it. You guys still showing up after all these years. 
And let's play against ETZ. That is probably the way to pronounce it. It could also be ET. Is that French? Hmm. Maybe it's ET. Whoa, whoa! The King's Gambit. Now we're talking. It's an opening I like to talk trash about. And I do not think it's best. Well, I do not think it's sound, but over the board, of course, it does lead to very exciting play. And ET. <clears throat> Bringing it back, taking us back to the 18th century, 19th, 20th, ah uh, no, some old century when they played a lot of King's Indian, King's Gambit. I tend to mix those up. He's thinking, I don't know, d4, d6, g3, is that the line they play here? Is knight c3 or g3 immediately also possible? Hmm. I'm not a big expert on move orders or subtleties here. My general thinking is always, I'm a pawn up and white has weakened his king side. So he has to go to some length to win that pawn back. Bishop b5. I have seen this position before, I believe. But I can't recall what I concluded when I saw that position. Probably not what I'm doing now. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is happening a worrying amount of time. That someone plays an opening, which I'm not a fan of, and I start talking trash about it and I get a terrible position, like pretty much instantly. It's not a good thing. I'm not sure my position is terrible, but that the bishop had to go to h6 does not look like a vote of confidence for what I'm doing here. But still, since the king's gambit is such a horrible opening, you normally have some margin for error before things get too serious. Guess I should probably focus on getting my pieces out quickly instead of being too greedy with stuff like knight takes e4. And thus I chose bishop g4. Knight d5, tricky move. Hmm, I'm very confused. Where are all the pieces? Should probably take here to get one out of the way. One less piece to worry about. And then deal with the others. Trying to think. Rook c1, bishop f3, queen f3, knight d5, ed, knight d4. I'm a pawn up. Queen e3 or e4 check, queen e7. Still a pawn up. So it seems to kind of work. Even though you could argue that I was a pawn up after two moves. So I have not made a great deal of progress. But such is life sometimes. I could also start with queen h4 check or queen e7. Trying to figure out what the smartest way to do this is. Queen 7, king f2, knight d4. King f2, I also have queen h4 check. Hmm. Maybe I'll try that. I'll probably regret it bitterly. Start pointing in a second. Yeah, king d2, for example. Hmm, I did not see coming. Yeah. See? Whining imminent. <laughs> Did I blunder material? I have to go deep into the trick bag. <laughs> I'm not very happy with what I've produced here. Ay, ay, ay. Point is, after queen takes h4, I have knight f3, hopefully winning the queen back and not losing the house instantly. But more gymnastics than I was really hoping to do in this position. Queen e3 is, I guess, what he's gonna settle on when I once again have to think. And I didn't see rook g4. Whoa. 
Why did I not see that move? I'm going to lose and be very upset about it. Just winning, right? Weird blindness not to see rook g4. Hmm, <clears throat> just lost. <laughs> Looks just lost. Yeah, I got nothing, right? Hmm, any ideas? Nah, nothing works. Knight f3, queen f3. It's all hopeless, so let's do this. Hmm. <clears throat> Ay, ay, ay. That is not a very impressive game. But what to do? Life goes on. The game will probably not go on much longer. Hmm. Hmm. But like white. Not only am I pissed down, I also can't really move anything. Neither of these factors instill me with great confidence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Endgame or no endgame? Both are completely winning, so it's really your choice, Mr. E.T. E.T. Petite. No endgame. Wisely chosen. I will give a check, however. When given the chance, I will check you. The problem when they have more pieces than you is they can normally attack more stuff and you can't really defend it because they have more pieces. It's a slippery slope. All you can do is give spike checks. Those tend to not help all that much in the long run. Yeah, I could, I could resign at any moment with a clear conscience. Just my lousy sportsmanship stops me from doing so. Of course, I harbor secret hopes of the comeback, but it's kind of unlikely, let's face it. Hope he's down. These are odds too big to overcome. <clears throat> he keeps insisting I take this pawn. So let's do it. It's the best position I've had in a long time. Bad news is it's still lost, but one move at a time, as they say, in the business. Now the rook is clumsy, my pawns are marching. What else could you possibly hope for? Well, not being a piece down, but that's not really realistic anymore. Which pawn to advance? F2 is probably gonna go C5 check. And if my pawns get a little stuck. Could go C6, rook H6, king E5, rook C6. Then something like E3, that looks like more fun. It's maybe more losing too, but it looks like more fun. Rook f6, the point is to block the impending check on e7 with rook e6. Well, here I guess I have time to just recapture. And win on time. That was, yeah, not the cleanest victory mankind has ever seen. All we learned is never resign, because if you resign, you might not win. Oh, I'm teaching you guys bad manners, because normally I get annoyed and fake bored. 
and somebody doesn't resign against me, a peace stone. But what can I say? Not my proudest moment. And always blame the mouse. That is normally true. Let's play against another noob, and I mean noob in every sense of the word. His rating indicates that he's new to chess, I've never played him before, and he does have a Guybrush Threepwood avatar, which immediately endears Mr. Flutlicht to me, because I grew up with The Secrets of Monkey Island, part 1 and 2, and I do recall many a sword insult battle. Swordmaster insult battle? I don't recall many things. No, I recall most of it. I've played these games over and over. We didn't have anything back in the days. Okay, we did have an upper middle class suburban upbringing, but we didn't have internet. So we had to get our little floppy disks in school and play Secrets of Monkey Island and Indiana Jones 3 and 4. But Monkey Island was always my favorite. Monkey Island 2 and maybe Sam and Max. Day of the Tentacle. No, not Sam and Max, sorry. Maniac Mansion 2, Day of the Tentacle. I enjoyed Sam and Max, but not at the level. It was, I believe, a little later when the golden age of adventures was over. Anyway, Flutlicht, let's talk about chess. We are playing a Sicilian where Flutlicht, yeah, developed his pieces logically. It's not theoretical or anything. Now, Queen D2 was maybe the first move you could wave a red flag at because it runs into this bishop g4 threatening to spoil his pawn structure with bishop takes f3 and white has to go queen e3 good move by the way but still slightly unnatural to stop me from doing damage to his structure <clears throat> i would like to go b5 i'm not sure how good it is my thought was knight f6 ef6 but then i i thought i was winning a piece here but then i spotted bishop d5 and I'm actually not winning a piece. Bishop b3, however, now my original plan does still work. Now I'll be a piece up. And that's gonna be a piece of work for Guybrush. He's no Lechuk yet. Nah, very lame Monkey Island references, but I do love that game. Do you guys remember the happiness when you had made it? To the past the three-headed monkey, the giant monkey head on the island. Probably no one remembers because I am very old to bring us back to that topic. And you people have not played Monkey Island or only a crappy Monkey Island, like number five on the PlayStation or whatever. In general, it's a topic I don't speak about much and I have no idea about nowadays games, but the golden age of computer games, the LucasArts adventures, I did enjoy. Not a big gamer nowadays. Not, not a gamer at all. <laughs> oh, I missed Queen takes h2 and knight f3 last game? That is very shameful. Wow. That is extremely shameful indeed. We, we could go back to that moment, but yeah. Wow, that is ridiculous. Mm. Same theme too. Yeah, that's just embarrassing. Very rusty. I'm not sure everybody knows what I'm talking about, but the last game where I thought I had missed, well, I did miss this rook g4 and thought I was losing a piece. I did have queen takes h2 and knight f3 check. That's just pathetic. Here, however, I did win two pieces. Still, whoa. That much I should have spotted and that's embarrassing. Mm. <laughs> I was hoping for g3 because this knight fork that's not really knight fork but wow not to see queen h2 I'm very happy these grandmaster title are given for life because if there was an offense where they might take it away that would be one of them and I wouldn't blame, no, 
I would still complain and be miserable about it, but it would be well deserved. That is just sickening, especially since I had a long think after Rook G4. Can we go back to that? I have to try to let you guys in on my misery. That's really just sad. How do I go back here? Oh, probably here. Wait for it. Where was it? Here. Okay, not 100%, but we do get to see the relevant part of the board. I don't normally mess up the design whenever I try to do something here. Anyway, not to spot queen takes h2 here is incredibly pathetic, especially after I had just played queen h4 with the point of queen takes h4, then knight f3. Obviously, this is the same point, and yeah. That's, what can I say? I'm not very proud of it. All right, moving on. Eventually. Who do I play? Some new faces here. I'm always very happy about all you new faces. Let's play this guy. Did I break the design? Completely? Nah. Kind of back. Backish. <laughs> Amfico Elias, are you the guy who had the sound problems? I believe that is the guy with the sound problems. Another thing I've recently learned about myself. I have horrible hearing, apparently. I have very good vision, but I don't hear stuff. Yeah, you're welcome to that bit of information. There's no punchline or follow-up. And whoa, Amfico Elias has studied theory here. Um, I used to know this line too. Um, the cleanest is knight f6, knight f4, e5. It's very dull though. The point is knight f6, knight f4, e5, d e5, queen a5 check, followed by queen takes e5, and you simplify in the center, get a playable position. But it is a little boring, so I'll play something a bit more daring like this. Probably objectively not as good, but more fun. Mr. Amfico looks like he is well prepared for this turn of events too. Well, I'm actually not. How do I deal with the impending h4. I don't know. <laughs> I probably should know, but I don't. Will my bishop get tarped? Could get tarped over there. Could put it here. It's a dumb square. <laughs> but I don't see how it gets lost, so I'll put it there. Ay -ay -ay -ay. I should study more theory. Well, I do know that knight f3, knight f6 is equal. But I don't know my deviations very well. h6 is a move. You can just casually throw in, I would guess, try to weaken my king side a little more. Could go g6 or g5, but neither fills my heart with joy. g5? It does look clumsy. I'll go with it. I'll roll with this. Bishop d3. At least I didn't lose that bishop. That's already a great accomplishment. I did weaken my king side, so I have to concern myself with stuff like long castle, bishop g5. Well, white actually has very nice pieces now after knight e4. I'm worse suffering against our friend with the audio problems. Tremendous suffering. Do I get mated? Possibly. C4 followed by bishop f4. Putting more pressure. F6 I'm not terribly unhappy to play. I understand it weakens the e6 pawn, but also lessens the... Lessons? No free lessons here. 
it lessens the chances of me getting checkmated by some queen to f6 followed by queen to g7. Still not claiming a great position here, but you know it is hanging around. Let's create some further weaknesses. Might as well. Now I've increased the chances of getting checkmated on the dark squares again by weakening them with f5. But in return I was hoping to gain some much needed freedom for my poor pieces. <laughs> a lot of raving and complaining in the chat. That always makes it a lot more fun for all of us. You haven't played me. <clears throat> we want Radio Yun. Why do you only play premiums? That are the joys of doing this show. I don't know, I'm in, a, I'm in a cranky mood today, sorry. I don't mean it, it's not you, it's me. Bishop f4, do I lose material? I was hoping not after knight f4, queen f4, rook f8. But it's, it's very borderline. Hmm. I'm still worse, that's for sure. Because this c4 cannot be controlled forever. And it's gonna be very unpleasant to deal with c4 followed by bishop c3. I'm trying to figure out how to deal with it at all, but I can't see anything good. So I make a bad move instead. <laughs> so far being outplayed by Amphico Elias. I'm gonna have to win on time or get in some night fork but with the track record of missing night forks that I've established today I don't like my chances on that front either. This pawn on h6 this was always a Kasparov favorite put the thorn in the flesh in it's gonna be useful in so many lines that's true does not let me rest easy because there's always rest easy whatever. There's always ideas with whatever queen to c3 and g7, rook coming to the seventh rank. It's just a very, very unpleasant position to defend. And yeah, it's suffering. Great suffering. I mean I will win on time, let's face it, but it's still not the most enjoyable experience I've ever had. It's not even in the top. And top 500, I would say. Maybe even top 5,000. I've played almost 5,000 games on this site already. This one is near the bottom of the enjoyment list of those games. So if we assume, and I'm not sure if that assumption will stand the test of time, that Blitz games are not the most enjoyable part of my life, then this might well be in like in the 10,000s. Anyway, Amfico Elias lost the threat here a little bit. He's willing to exchange queens, which I believe is a mistake, because now all of a sudden this tremendous asset he had with heavy pieces on the board turns into what we call a weakness. And Mr. Horsey, that was Suffering trying to deal with the bishop all of a sudden has become Bojack Horseman here on e4, controlling the industry, <clears throat> spreading his secretariat wings all over the board. And I'm sorry for all the Bojack references, it's just the last show I've seen. Hmm, I guess I have to do this. Well, at least this pawn is protected again, but my, well, at least from the white point of view. But my knight is still very dominant in the middle of the board. Still, how do I win? Mm, he has a fairly obvious plan of bringing the king all the way around. Hmm. 
I guess I'll jump around. If my king makes it to e4, before the white king makes it to d3, that is quite an accomplishment. Then I can continue strengthening my position with knight f5 or whatever. And something should happen. This is one of these fake deep thoughts where I'm just staring at the position to make it look like I'm not only playing on time, but I'm also trying to find a winning plan. I'm not. Oof, terrible move. As evidenced by playing b5, allowing a4. Whoa, that was bad. <laughs> Let's calculate knight e2, king d2, knight f4, gf, b8, b8, king f4, a5, king e5, a6, king d6, a7. Not a good line. Okay, I should speed up a bit too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, tremendous endgame technique, as usual, on display here. Why am I beating myself up so much today? What have I done to myself to deserve this? I'm not just in a cranky mood. Hmm. Another game. Probably too much banter blitz these days. Hmm. What about Noir Desir from Italy? Two three forty four. That is a dangerous opponent. I've talked about this situation a lot, I'm sure. My main move here is Queen C two. But I've also dabbled with stuff like E three knight E two or E three bishop D three. C6 is a move I enjoy too. Mm. I was actually, yeah, I was looking at this the other day. Quite a playable little line. I'm out of the book now, don't you worry. I didn't look at it in great detail. E4, I take Z4. I'm not that brain dead yet. Okay. <laughs> I think bishop c7, and if I go e4, black is probably in time to meet it with e5. When, let's say, takes, takes, bishop f4, queen e7, bishop c7, queen c7. I don't really see why it should be better. So I'll just develop more quietly. Go g3, bishop g2. Not really claiming all that much after e5, but keeping pieces on the board. And we'll see how it all turns out. Not sure how to recapture after ed. Could make a case for any legal recapture. But I will play ED. Mm. Should E6, why not? Head it towards C4. Still, gotta get these pieces out. It does go there. Interesting. Not sure about queen c2. I'm never sure about anything. It looked logical. Clearing the d1 square for the rook and also introducing ideas like maybe knight e4 when this bishop could be hanging. Normal position. <laughs> That's the expert commentary you've tuned in for. Normal position. Normal move. Bishop e2. Knight d2. One second, looks like there's something important happening on my phone. And isn't there always in our 
Crazy times we live in. D5. How do I react? Let me let me think about this for a second. Takes takes knight f4. Say knight bd7. Knight takes cd bishop f4. Am I better there? Maybe. <clears throat> I could actually be better. <coughs> it also made a lot of sense to go bishop f4, bishop e5, for example. So not sure. Well, now after knight takes, bishop takes, I was hoping that I can open the position with d5 quickly before he's fully developed and then either use my bishop pair or my lead in development or ideally both. Yeah, I believe this has turned out okay. So if knight takes f4, probably knight d7 was the better choice to make. Because now even bishop e4 looks very good. It's a matter of taste. Takes and d5 looks very strong. Or bishop e4. Both look quite strong. You know what? Let's keep queens on the board. Because <clears throat> I'm hoping that his queen will turn out to be less useful than my queen. Of course, now after d5, I have to keep an eye on my f2 pawn. But if I ever find the time to play king g2, my king side will be fairly safe. I could find the time right here, right now, if I wanted to. cd bishop d5, rook d5, queen c8 is mate. Why not? Sometimes. We all could use a little timeout. And this line I calculated, hopefully correctly. CD, bishop d5. Rook takes d5, queen c8, bishop d8, queen d8. It's kind of relevant. Well, I have CD, bishop f3, so it's not life and death. That's still a nice little trick. Sometimes it's much more unpleasant for your opponent. And this I'm very serious about if you make a quiet move giving him many options instead of going for a forced line like dc6 which was probably also good for me but you can see by the time he's taking now he has options but none of them are very pleasant and it's much much harder to play than after a forced move i just hope i did not miscalculate this bishop f3 might actually be a stronger move than bishop takes d5 but i will go here just hoping for the back rank mate that's really the main motivation behind that move. But of course, Noir Désir does not give me that pleasure. I could grab the pawn, bishop c6, rook d8, queen c6, but it feels like selling, what's the term? Shortchanging my advantage a bit. Don't see anything better. Well, I can't take on c6 immediately. I don't actually know it. Need to throw in rook d8. Queen e2. Worst case scenario. And probably best case scenario. Same scenario here. I have queen f3 keeping everything covered. Queen b2. I don't know. Go away. It does not feel like going away. Mm. Okay, I changed my mind. I want my rook here to prepare a4. You can have the d file. Mm. Why did I give him the d file? What's wrong with me? Rook d3 bothered me more, to be perfectly frank. Okay. Full-blown focus mode. Let's win this game. Let's think about moves. Bye. Let's, I mean me. 
Mm -hmm. G5 is possible, but bishop c7, for example, does not unduly bother me. I have a feeling it's probably a good idea to get rid of pieces, so I can't blunder them. And so I can use my famous rook endgame technique. Give me that. I'm not planning to give it back either. Just so you know. If he takes rook c8 as checkmate, well here I was hoping I could keep all my earthly possessions by just putting my rook here and then pushing them. I like my chances here, both on and off the clock. Mainly on. And Noir Dizier does lose on time. What about this dude? Polly. Known from Goodfellas. Ah, that's a different Polly. This one is Polly89. And we all know what 89 stands for. Well, at least we can operate under the assumption that it means that Polly is 27 years old. So much information just from your username, Polly. Knight f3, g3, revealing even more information. He likes to fianchetto his bishop, sorry. Looked like it was only one. And I decided to follow suit, fianchetto my bishop as well. Because why not? Castle, I'm just, I'll just never be a natural born King's Indian player. Therefore, it's much more <clears throat> in my style to go d5. And after c4, either dc, d4, or c6. c6, yeah, it's a bit passive. And now after d4, we get the always exciting symmetrical, what's this called? Exchange Grunfeld? I don't know. I think knight e4 is the easiest way to equalize here. But it can lead to mass exchanges as well. So I'll play more passively just for... I don't know why. Karana has been playing this b6, bishop b7 plan. Not sure where he normally puts his horse. Probably c6 here, right? Could put it on d7, but it looks very passive. Yeah, no, I'm slightly worse, but I'm guessing it's manageable. Why do you do this to yourself, Fabi? It doesn't look that nice now that I have to see this from the dark side. All kinds of tactics to be taken into account already. Knight e5, a6, knight takes d5, all kinds of craziness. Or any move, knight takes d5. Ugh, I don't want to think. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Could very well work here. I did spot that I'm not like lost, lost after knight d5, knight d5, knight c6, bishop c6, rook c6, rook c6, queen c6, knight f4, gf, queen d4. But I'm probably not winning either. <clears throat> so do I have to calculate all this stuff again? All this pressure Paul is putting. What have I done to deserve this, Mr. Pauly? Can I do this? Still have to calculate knight d5. Ugh, it's so annoying. Gives me physical pain having to think about this knight d5 every juncture. Another thing I should be thinking about, but haven't really, is knight c6 followed by queen takes a7. Because after rook a8, he has queen c7. So I was kind of winging it and hoping that there would be some trick like e5, d, e, rook a8. But I'm not 100% affirmative that that's the case. Anyway, Pauli plays much more sensibly. Probably wants to go e4. No, he wants to go knight b5. Also a good move. Planning an invasion. 
on d6. Can I go knight d4? I would like to go knight d4. <laughs> Sometimes if you want to do something, you just got to do it. Rook d4, c1, oh, so complicated. It's all so complicated. I'm very tired today for really no reason. So I tend to just make the moves and hope they work, which normally is not the ideal approach, to put it mildly. Mm. So rook d4, rook c1, bishop c1, bishop d4, queen d4, queen b5 would leave me material up, but there would be bishop h6, and my enjoyment could be short-lived. Mm. Okay, I should throw this in anyway, I would guess. Now I have a bit of a choice here. That moves like rook c8. Yeah, no follow up. And rook d1, how does this line go? Bishop c6, queen a7, it's kind of equal. Do I want equal? No. Let's check the alternatives. Bishop d4, queen d4, queen b5 is what I was talking about, bishop h6. Not all that thrilled there. Mm -hmm. A6, A6 looks like a move. Knight C3, B5, Queen B4. Very complicated too. Oh boy, I can't calculate today. And I'm very forgetful too. I already forgot what bothered me about Rook C8, I guess. I'm just gonna sit here and lose on time, staring at this position. Now I'll just play a very random move again. I don't know. Rook d1 is a big problem. I somehow couldn't figure it all out. The line that I calculated is rook d1, bishop c6, queen a7, bishop b5. Queen b6, bishop e2, and I thought I was okay. I'm still not sure this is the best there was. Apart from the fact that there's all kinds of bishop moves, but then it feels like my rook should be better off here than it's there. Why? Why did I ignore knight c3? I thought I had something here, but what could that possibly have been? Probably. Ah, well, I have queen a4. I don't know. I don't know things. <laughs> yeah, something's gone very, very wrong. And I've been slow. Oh, and he wants to checkmate me. Even more bad news. Why did I miss the checkmating idea too? Oh boy. That might just end the game. Completely blundered this move. Hi, yeah, yeah. Yep, it's game over, right? <clears throat> I'm gonna lose to Pauli eighty nine on all fronts: time, position, winding. I don't see any defenses, any. Not a very pleasant journey for my king. <clears throat> F3 is a pretty decent move to wrap it up. But I will let him choose because there's so many options. Queen d4, deadly quiet move. Okay, 
Very good game by, oops, not draw, <laughs> by Poly89, mainly decided by me blundering. Blundering queen, well, a sequence of moves here, but um, in this position, I still have a feeling I have something good, but I couldn't quite put my finger on it. So the problem is this line takes, takes, queen b5, Bishop h6, threatening checkmate, and if e5, queen e5, f6, I'll end up in trouble after, let's say, queen e7, rook f7, queen d8. This is not gonna end well. And f6, at the very least, I'm worse, so it's not worth comp contemplating either. But here, there's gotta be something. I just couldn't figure it out. Maybe there doesn't have to be something. I thought there should be something. I played rook c8, which, yeah. Looked logical, but maybe after knight c3, it's just not much there. If queen a4, then rook a4. And once again, not quite in time, because after d4, there's bishop takes b7. And yeah, let's say bishop c6 blocks my rook on the c-file. So maybe it's just nothing. What else can I do? Maybe this move? Same problem, it's just queen d1 against everything. Hmm. Nope, maybe it just didn't work. B5, queen d1 here. It already feels like white is fully coordinated and this bishop d4 just gives up the dark squares. So it was a bad decision, even without blundering this queen f6. Well, then after queen f6, yeah, it's just instantly game over because I get checkmated here. Not a theme I've never heard of. Anyway, good game by Pauli89. And time to move on and play somebody else. What time is it, by the way? Feel since I'm so tired. All this tiredness. Time is passing extra slowly. But we shall play against Timinator. Hmm. What does the TI stand for? Timinator. I haven't seen the latest entry in the Terminator series. This misspelled Genesis, because it sounded like it was getting too weird. Did I miss a lot? No. Hmm. D4 E6. I'm reading the chat. People making a strong case for making the chat premium only everywhere, like we had during the World Championship. And yeah, we might have to go there. But it is not today, so knock yourself out. Timinator plays the so-called triangle. Very decent system. I believe Sopico has done a video series about it. After knight f3, he goes f5. And since the stone wall scares me, I will go for the counter stone wall. Mm, with knight e5, followed by f4. When on paper, I guess white is a tiny bit better because I have c4 versus c6 and I have the pleasure of having had the first move. However, black is extremely solid. Knight f6, castles, and then do whatever. b6, bishop b7, knight d7, put a knight on e4. It's nothing much for white, that's for sure. <laughs> of course, there's always the hope. Well, knight e5, f5 is hardly going to happen. Well, the hope is that the structure is so close that probably white should think about playing on the queen side somehow, but I'm not quite sure how, to be perfectly honest. Can I go here? Looks like a bit of a blank shot after king h8. So yeah, I'll just play slowly. I would like to go get in rook b1, b4, b5 to soften things up on the queen side a little bit, but such a slow plan. And after rook b1, there's also queen e7. And if I have to go a3, we're really reaching new levels of slowness. But it does seem like the natural front for me to work on. So here we go. I would have thrown in queen e7 just to provoke me to play either a3 or c5, closing the center before going for this b4 operation. But everything black's been doing has been fairly natural as well. 
This bishop e8, bishop h5 is a typical plan in these positions, trying to exchange the quote unquote bad bishop on c8. However, if I get in my little b5 move here, then this bishop might be needed to defend the queen side. c5, I haven't calculated. Well, I don't think I need to make disclaimers about not having calculated today. But it feels like it's opening the position up for my pieces. And cb5 feels similarly wrong. Either knight b5 or even cd5. I'll go knight b5. Because now, yeah, I've achieved what I wanted. I've extended the battlefield and my pieces find work on the queen side. Well, with this locked up center and king side, it's very hard to generate enough play. Yeah, now I have some targets. B7 is weak. Queen B3 is coming up. And it looks like a pretty pleasant position for it. C5 was also a good move. But why not increase the pressure against B7? And potentially on this diagonal. diagonal. <laughs> Tough word. Diagonal first. And now... First, material gains and Timinator instantly resigns. Bit early to resign, it's just a pawn. Like, my position is nice. Play King H8 and play on. It's way too early to throw in the towel. Anyway, thanks for the game, Timinator. Let's find somebody else. How often have I said that? Let's play against Ivan Yerkovic, 2310. Is that his real life rating? Then. I would be scared. Mark me as scared. Hmm. And scared me employs the Karo Ken. Let's say what Ivan Yerkovich has in store here. Plays the F3 system. Interesting. Have I looked at the F3 system recently? The sharp line start with D, E, F, E, E5. There's also this line with E5, D, E, Bishop, C5. That leads to a very messy position. Arguably not the most correct choice and you can play more positionally playing e6 or even g6 But since I'm on half tilt, I'll go for this and see what happens See where this journey takes us Black is a pawn down, but he is hoping to establish some counterplay On this open diagonal and by just quickly getting the piece out. I don't know any theory here Which is sadly another recurring theme but it does feel like there should be some compensation. Now e5 is hanging, so white probably wants to go f4. Then I have some options. Queen b6 is an option, bishop g4 is an option, knight f5 is an option. There's many possibilities. I'm not sure. d4 also a possibility. I should list because of the knight e4, this queen a5 check. So yeah, choices. Mm. D4 move is starting to grow on me. It's very anti-positional. It could just work. D4 has to go bishop c6. He plays bishop g5, which changes the ballpark. Changes the ballpark. I could take here. I'm not sure I wanna. Mm, interesting move. Still play d4, but now he has all these captures available. Don't like that. What about queen a5? Is that a move? That at least looks aggressive. If it looks aggressive, it's good enough for me. New motto. Hmm. One point is that queen d2, d4 now probably does win material. Well, after any of these captures, bishop e7, probably knight e7. Then, yeah, at least I have the bishop pair to work with. Bishop c6, similarly, knight c6, queen d5, I haven't calculated. But such stuff normally you don't need to calculate till the end because black's just so active. Something's gonna give knight b4, bishop e6, whatever. So we'll see how this goes. Bishop d2 could be moved, d4, bishop c6. I don't know. It's an interesting position.
Mm-hmm. Let's go bishop c6. Knight takes was the plan. As mentioned, queen d5 I'm not very concerned about. Queen d2 or bishop d2 do look. Maybe a3. Wow, he does go for it with queen d5. No. <laughs> I did end up in the position where I said, yeah, okay, this is stuff we don't have to calculate. Way too much compensation. And I actually have to calculate. Hmm. Bishop e6, queen d2, knight e5 looks like one simplish solution. And yes, yeah, since I'm really not in the mood to calculate, I'll go for that. Could be that knight b4 was much stronger. Following, following up with bishop f5. Queen e4, I have not seen coming. There goes my simplish solution. I can still take here. But yeah, my calculation is not brilliant today. The point is queen e5, bishop f2 wins the queen. Long castles is legal and maybe the best move, but it's also scary to castle where all my pieces are hanging out. Once again, the low calculation, common sense approach, knight c4. Then tricks start appearing like bishop a3 or knight takes b2. We'll see how this goes. Knight d5 looks like an obvious choice, but then I think, yeah, I can just take on a2. Now it looks decent. Let's see what Ivan comes up with. Bishop d2 maybe, king b1, I could take on b2. <clears throat> but do I have anything better? Bishop a3 is also legal. <laughs> I don't see anything better. Point is king b2, bishop a3, king a1 or b1, and I just reclaim the material and continue the attack with a very nice position. Or so I thought, because white really doesn't have a lot of counterattack. Well, my bishops and soon my rooks will be pointed at his king. Well, it's his queen side, but the side where his king is. So that did look pretty tempting. Still got to finish it off. How do I do that? Bishop b4 probably. Yeah. Mm. He wants h6, but then bishop c3. Worst case scenario, or worst case scenario, as we say in German, does win a piece. And yeah, rook d3, bishop c3 is also no help. So the end is near for Ivan. Promises a2 pawn is overloaded, so after either recapture, queen a2 would end the game. Therefore, Ivan Yerkovich, 2310, does resign. <laughs> what time is it? One more game for me. Then I'll leave this another show. Who is it? Mr. Master Ostrovsky at 7. Probably gonna teach you some stuff about chess instead of the blundering and narcissistic whining you are getting used to over here. Mm, okay, last game I like to choose randomly by just clicking in places on my list. The problem is if I click on a non premium. Or somebody already played in the show. I have to click on something else. That oh yeah, chess castle. Hmm. Does that refer to the position of the castle king, or do you literally live in a chess castle? Like, do you have towers and mm, horses? That's all I associate with castles: towers and horses. Anyway, he does play two d5. Not considered to be a good move. Here I learned, I'm not sure if this still is valid, that e4 is too soon, because after knight f6, let's say knight c3, black has this trick e5, and things aren't so clear. But then if you start with knight to f3, white has a very nice position here, because now e4 is this usual spot, where I don't know if I should say looming, impending, coming up, blah blah, e4 is hard to stop. Bishop f5, I'm also not sure about knight bd2, queen b3 might be a stronger move. Knight bd2 looks decent enough, once again, threatening e4. 
keeping black busy, I guess the best is to go back to f6, when probably I haven't achieved all that much yet, frankly. Bishop g6 is possible too, but it allows me to expand a little. Could keep expanding with e5. It doesn't feel fully in the spirit of the position. I'll move the bishop out and see where that takes us. e5 is an interesting move here. I wasn't sure about it. Knight e5, queen d4, let's say knight df3. That should be okay for white in this. Not sure. e6, now we get in the more normal setup where, yeah, I guess I'm a little better, but since it's knight on... Um, what's the square called? d2. This misplaced quite a bit. Things aren't that easy. And Chess Castle is immediately pointing that fact out by targeting my d4 pawn, forcing my knight to another slightly awkward square on b3. <clears throat> More complaints in the chat by people I did not get to play. Yeah, choose my opponents pretty randomly between the premium members. Well, as mentioned, favoring the ones that I have not played yet. So yeah, if I do not did not choose you, it's probably nothing personal, but just too many challenges. However, I do a lot of these shows. I believe I did shows on Thursday, on Friday, on Monday, and today. So I'm trying to give you as many chances as I can to get to play everybody. And I am deeply sorry from the bottom of my heart if I did not manage to play you instantly. My apologies. That was my very sincere speech. Hmm. How do I avoid move repetition against Chess Castle? Probably I should go back all the way back to D2. Let's do this once more. But I do appreciate that there's so many people joining in the show, challenging, partaking in the chat, which is a blessing and a curse as usual. Chat is moving too fast for me to really interact with you guys. But I'm glad to have company, especially on days like today, where I feel slow and tired and I'm mainly rambling. It will help to keep me sane that there's apparently people watching this. So thanks for that. That was sincere. What else is new in the chess world, by the way? This London Chess Classic is starting soon, a couple days. I won't be doing commentary, unfortunately, but there will be commentary here on Chess24. We will embed, I believe, the commentary by the St. Louis guys, so you can check that out. I'm not sure what I'll be up to. I might do the occasional highlight video. But yeah, I've been plenty busy the last month, Plural. Mm. So I don't mind taking a bit of a break. Then there's gonna be Vikanze in January, where we will have our own Chess 24 show, most likely with yours truly, and hopefully even bigger names than yours truly. So that's gonna be fun. We'll do the show from here in Hamburg, from our studios. Hmm. In between, there is the Rapid and Blitz World Championship in, where is it? Doha? where I have no idea what the show situation is, to be perfectly frank with you. I'm sure it's gonna be something, but I'm not up to date on that one. I should find that out. It's between Christmas and New Year. Maybe I should go there, like with this talent that I've been showing in my Blitz, in my Banter Blitz games. What can stop me in the Wrapped and Blitz World Championship? Actually, I'm half joking, but I'm half like the idea of going there. Not that I have any. Mm, ambitions, but it would be fun to play in a tournament with strong players. I should look into that. But it's unlikely. Mm. Speaking of tournament with strong players or not so strong players, my favorite tournament, the Thailand Open, will go into, I don't even know what edition, another edition. I'm always glad to hear that. New location where I've never been. Next to Hua Hin or Cha Am. My Thai pronunciation is still not very good after all these years. But yeah, I'm looking forward to that one in April. I finally got rid of the double rounds. So it's only one game per day, which is really 
the most anybody should play. Half a game per day would be perfect, but one game per day is acceptable. As for this game, I'm playing against Chess Castle. I do think I finally managed to overload his defenses. Bishop h5, now many moves are winning, g4. Just trying to count pieces at the end of this line. And I was not able to count the pieces, but I have a feeling since I'm taking this one with check that the body count should favor me at the end of this line. Normally it's risky to base body count issues, and I don't mean any iced tea stuff on feelings, but here, yeah, I am a piece up. So that's good news. I should avoid blundering some back rank mate with a bishop on h2. It's very hard to blunder that because I also have bishop f1 in reserve. Therefore, Chess Castle resigns, and that brings us to the end of today's show. I do have this I'm sorry segment, which is also getting a bit stale. I'm genuinely sorry for being a bit cranky and not very sharp today. Sometimes that happens at the end of a day, but it's no real excuse. Thank you guys for watching the show anyway. We'll be back in a better mood, probably, let's say Friday. I think I should take some Banter Blitz days off, get some other stuff done. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for partaking. Apologies if I didn't get to play you. See you next time. Bye-bye.